Hello and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this lesson, we're going to begin by looking at the Cartesian coordinate system and then how we can use it to graph a linear relation. Now recall that you can represent a single real number by a point on a number line, which is in one dimension. So for example, we have a number line. It has two arrows, one on each end. We can place zero in the middle and then plot numbers on either side. These numbers can be integers, uh, fractions, or decimals. So if let's say I want to graph the number two, I can draw a circle and color it in at the point two. Now the Cartesian coordinate system, also known as the Cartesian plane, represents a point in two dimensions. It consists of two perpendicular axes called the x-axis, which runs horizontally, going left and right, and then there's the y-axis, which runs vertically, up and down. Now, the origin is an important point, because that is the point where the x and the y-axis meet. The coordinates of the origin are 0, 0. So, taking a look at this Cartesian plane, we can label this point where the x and the y axis meet as the origin, and that's 0, 0. Now the x axis is the one that runs horizontal, so that's this one here, and the y axis runs vertically, like I said. Now the x axis and the y axis also divide our plane, our surface, into four quadrants. And we number the quadrants starting in the top right. So this is quadrant one. And then we move in a counterclockwise direction. So this is quadrant two. And then we have quadrant three down here. And then finally quadrant four. And we tend to use Roman numbers or Roman numerals to label the quadrants. A point or an ordered pair can be graphed on the Cartesian plane and it consists of two coordinates. The first coordinate we call x and the second coordinate we call y. So the first number represents x and it's the distance that we move in the horizontal direction. If it's a negative number, we're going to move left. And if it's a positive number, we move right. Oops. The second number is represented by the letter Y, and it's the distance we move in the vertical direction compared to the origin. So if it's a negative number, we move down. And if it's a positive number, we move up. And remember, we always start at the origin. Important to remember that x always goes first. And also remember that each point consists of two numbers, which are directions to get you to only one point. Let me show you some examples. So here we have um, some points, a to e, and we want to point, sorry, plot them on the grid. So the first one is a equals to 4, negative 1. So starting at the origin, we go in the x direction because 4 stands for x. The negative 1 is y. We go 4 to the right, and then we go negative 1 down. And that's point A. Okay, point B, we have negative 3, 2. So we're going to go negative 3, and that's going to be to the left, and then 2 up. And that's point B. All right, the next one, C, it says 0, negative 5. That means that we don't move left or right because the first coordinate is 0, but then we're going to move down 5 to plot the point C here. All right, then we have D, which is 3, 0. So this time we're going to move 3 to the right, but 0, we don't move either up or down, so we're going to plot a point on our x-axis, and that's point D. 
And the last one, point E, we're going to move negative 1 to the left and negative 6 down. And that is point E. Next, let's take a look at linear relations. So a linear relation is a relationship between the independent and the dependent variables that can be represented by a Cartesian coordinate graph. That just means that we can draw a line on a Cartesian plane. So a change, a constant change, specifically, in one variable produces a constant change in the other variable. That means that when my x changes consistently or constantly, that will also produce a change that is also constant in the y variable. So when we draw the graph, we should get a line. So take a look at example two. Which of these graphs represent a linear relation? Well, we can see that the first one is a line, and it's a straight line. So this is a linear relation. The second graph is dash, but it still is a line as well. So this is also a linear relation. Now the third graph is not linear, meaning it's not a straight line because it curves up. This is not a linear relation. We've taken a look at some examples graphically, so now let's take a look at some examples in a table. So in the first example, we can see that the ends go up by one, so one, two, three, four, five, and the values that are P, they increase by 3, and then by 3 again, and 11 to 14 is by 3 again, and then finally from 14 to 17 is it also increases by 3. So this first example, it is a linear relation. That is because the difference is always constant. Let's take a look at the second example. So we take a look at n, and again, the numbers increase by 1. So those are good. When we take a look at p, the first number increases by 3. But then from 5 to 10, it increases by 5, and then 7, and then 9. So this one is not a linear relation. Oops, not a linear relation because the difference does not stay the same. Or we can say because the difference is not constant. All right, now that we know how to interpret whether a graph or a table of values is linear, let's take a look at how to graph linear relations. So we're going to graph the following equations by creating a table of values. And we do this by substituting the values in for the independent variable, which is our x. And then we're going to solve for the dependent variable, our y value. So I like to choose numbers that are both negative and positive. So I'm going to start with some smaller negative numbers. So we're going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We're going to substitute these x values in for the x in the equation and then solve for my y. So the first value we're going to plug in is negative 2. So we're going to go 2 and then times negative 2 plus 3 and that will give me negative 1. And then we're going to go 2 times negative 1 plus 3 and that will give me 1. And then we're going to go 2 times 0, our next x value plus 3, and that will be 3. Keep going. 2 times 1 plus 3 is 5, and then 2 times 2, our last value, plus 3 is 7. All right, so we're going to graph these numbers. We're going to go negative 2 and negative 1, negative 1, positive 1, 0, and 3, 1 right, 5 up, 2 right, and 
seven up. Well, seven up. So now we're gonna draw a line that connects all of these points together. And I'm gonna pull out my ruler to connect these points in a nice straight line. Like so. And there we have our line that crosses through our five points. And we can also draw arrows because we know that this graph goes on forever because we can pick lots and lots of different x values to get different y values. All right, next we're going to find our y intercept. Our y intercept is where the graph crosses the y axis. So that would be right here. So this is called our y intercept. And our y intercept here is 0 and 3. All right, let's take a look at another example. So again, we're going to choose values for x and plug them in um, to solve for our y. And I'm going to choose negative 2 to positive 2 again. So we're going to take negative 2 times negative 2, our first x value, and then plus 1, and we get 5. Okay, next x value, negative 2 times negative 1, plus 1, and we get 3, and so on. Negative 2 times 0, plus 1. We get 1, negative 2 times 1, plus 1, we get negative 1, and then negative 2 times 2, plus 1, is negative 3. So plotting these points onto our coordinate grid, we get something that looks like this. And you can see that these points will always line up on a line. So for the purposes of grade 9, or math 9, if your points don't line up, you know that something is wrong. And identify my y-intercept. That is right here. That's where the line crosses the y-axis. So that's a y-intercept. And this time the y-intercept is 0, 1. Now, the last thing I want to do is to show you how to find the missing variable um, from an equation. So we're going to substitute the given value into the correct variable, and then we're going to solve the equation to find the other variable. So here's an example. We have y equals 3x minus 2 as our equation, and we know that x equals 0, and y equals 4 and 7. So let's start with x equals 0. We're going to take 0, and we're going to substitute it into our equation. So we have y equals 3 times 0, I'm going to put 0 in brackets, minus 2. See here we have y equals negative 2. So when x is 0, the y value is negative 2. All right, next we have y equals 4. So we're going to plug 4 in for our y value. And that equals 4 equals 3x minus 2. We're going to add 2 to both sides. So now we have 6 equals 3x, and then divide both sides by 3, and then we have x equals 2. So 2 is our second value. And then lastly, we're going to put in and substitute 7. So we have 7 equals 3x minus 2. Add 2 to both sides. We get 9 equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3 and x equals 3, our last x value. I also want to show you how to find the missing value when there is a fraction in the equation. So we're going to substitute negative 3 into x. And notice I'm going to write it a little bit higher. And the reason is because negative 3 is the same as negative 3 over 1. Now my 3's can reduce to 1 and negative 1. So now I have y equals negative 5 times negative 1, which is 5 and then plus 2, which equals 7. All right, we can do the same thing with y equals 2. Subtract 2 from both sides, and then I get 0 equals negative 5 thirds x. And then to get rid of the negative 5 thirds, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Now we also know that anything times negative 5 thirds to get me 0, x has to be 0. And so these reciprocals, fractions, do cross off, but then 0 times negative 3 fifths is 0. So therefore, x equals 0.